radical feminists think that men's oppression of women is systemic, and they try to identify the organising force of this system. Catherine McKinnon proposes that sexuality is this force. Implicit in her argument is a series of perhaps somewhat unintuitive claims about what sexuality is and what it does. I'm going to try to explicate some of these. First, sexuality is socially constructed. By this, Catherine means that sexuality is malleable and that society moulds it in a certain way. That it teaches us to eroticise certain things. That if we lived in a different society, we might eroticise different things. Second, sexuality is a process. We tend to think of it as something that we have, like a sexual orientation, or something that we are, like heterosexual, but Catherine's suggesting instead that it is something that we do, that it is a process or an activity in which we participate. Third, sexuality is the process that transforms male people into men and female people into women, thus creating the genders. Let me unpack this. I've already said that sexuality is socially constructed, or that we're taught uh, what to sexually desire. The next question is, what is it that we're taught to sexually desire? Catherine argues that male people are taught to eroticize dominance and female people to eroticize subordination. So if we think of sexuality as the process by which we become sexual beings, or the process by which we learn our sexualities, then to say that sexuality transforms male people into men and female people into women is to say that as male people learn to eroticize dominance, they become men, and as female people learn to eroticize subordination, they become women. As Catherine says, this resolves the duality in the term sex. If the process by which we become sexual beings is the process by which we become men and women, then the act in which we express and fulfill our sexual desire, sex, is the act in which we express and realise our gendered selves, our sex in the sense of manhood and womanhood. In other words, in the act of sex, we become the sexes. This is how sexuality creates gender hierarchy. It transforms one group of people, male people, into people who are eroticised dominance, which group is men, and another group, female people, into people who are eroticised subordination, which group is women. It thus renders men's pursuit of sexual pleasure their pursuit of dominance, and women's pursuit of sexual pleasure their pursuit of subordination. It renders our pursuit of sexual pleasure our pursuit of men's domination of women, of gender hierarchy. This explains why, on the traditional sexual script, the sexual encounter takes the form of a man's conquest of a woman. The man advances, the woman resists, the man overcomes the woman's resistance, in which moment both experience sexual pleasure. It also explains why so much of men's violence against women is sexual in nature. Notice that it also puts sexual abuses on a continuum with sex itself. It makes rape of a piece with sex. Sometimes in an attempt to politicise rape, feminists say that it is about violence or about power, not about sex. For Catherine, this is a false dichotomy. What is about power or violence is necessarily about sex, because for men, power and violence are sexual. They're experienced as sex. Fourth, sexuality is a basic process. That is, it is a process in which we must participate in order to exist. So how is it basic? Well, if our becoming sexual beings is our becoming gendered beings, then it's by expressing and fulfilling our sexual desires that we're realised that we fully exist as our genders. This means that we must participate in sexuality in order to fully exist as our gendered selves, as men or women. I think sexuality is basic in this sense, the sense that we have to participate in it in order to socially exist. Fifth, because sexuality is basic, because it's an activity that we have to participate in in order to exist, it's not one domain of social life. It pervades all social life. Consequently, sexuality is more diffusive and encompasses much more than we tend to think. It encompasses more than just what we recognise as sexual acts. As Catherine says, sexuality in feminist light is not a discrete sphere of interaction or a feeling or behaviour in which pre-existing social divisions may or may not be played out. It is a pervasive dimension of social life, one that permeates the whole. A division along which gender occurs and through which gender is socially constituted 
it is a dimension along which other social divisions like race and class partly play themselves out. On this view, sexual relations are the consummation of social relations, the sexual domain a microcosm of society. As Kate Millett says, coitus can scarcely be said to take place in a vacuum. Although of itself it appears a biological and physical activity, it is set so deeply within the larger context of human affairs that it serves as a charged microcosm of the variety of attitudes and values to which culture subscribes. This is one way of making sense of the feminist claim that the personal is political. <laughs>